we're uh, about ready to start. We're still about a minute away. Just would remind uh, all of you who, um, well, maybe tell some of you for the first time, but if you're here for the first time, we'd like you to be able to interact with us as we go along. And with this software, we should get your, um, your questions immediately. But please file away uh, questions that you might want to ask towards the end of the presentation. But if something is uh, important, uh, feel free to go ahead and drop in a question even in the middle of the presentation, and I'll be glad to address those as we go along. I think that this presentation will take about 30 minutes or so. It's not going to be a terribly long presentation. And then we'll leave some time at the end for, for some discussion uh, and some interaction. OK. Well, I think we will get started. Um, thank you for, for uh, joining us for this this webinar on songs, chants, and jingles, one of the essential principles of classical pedagogy. Um, we've gone through several other principles. We've looked at some Latin maxims like uh, festina lente, which means to make, make haste slowly. Uh, we've looked at multum non multa, which means much not many, or uh, dig deep wells and cover uh, fewer things really well, rather than kind of doing a superficial uh, covering of a lots of things that students tend to forget. We've also done uh, uh, we've, we've taken a look at repetio mater memoriae, which is uh, repetition is the mother of memory. That particular dictum uh, is about memory, of course. And in that particular seminar, we looked at how important memory is and uh, the way in which memory works. And of course, one focus of that dictum is that regular visitation or repetition is important for making learning permanent, for truly memorizing something. Well, songs, chants, and jingles certainly relates to all of these maxims, but it relates to that memory maxim, repetitio mater memoriae, a good bit, because songs, chants, and jingles help students to remember permanently uh, important information. So it's a pedagogical tool that we want to make sure that we use well. We want to know how that tool functions, and we want to use it appropriately. So this particular seminar is on songs, chants, and jingles. Now, I bet that several of you already uh, use this particular tool well. So at the end of the seminar, I'm going to give folks a chance to share some uh, ways in which they have used, you have used songs and jingles and chants effectively. But let's dive into this important subject. Uh, why do we do, why would we want to use uh, songs, chants, and jingles as a pedagogical tool? Well, first of all, what do I mean by songs, chants, and jingles? Uh, jingles is maybe the, the word that's the most confusing. Jingles, you know, we talk about a commercial jingle. It's almost like a, a musical cliche. Uh, little, little ways of um, hooking, um, <clears throat> hooking information to a, a, um, a, 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 a small and memorable melody. Uh, songs and chants, you know, can cover lots of different things. There are different kinds of songs, to be sure. There's different kinds of chants. But in education, songs and chants and jingles tend to be shorter, and they tend to be fairly simple, uh, so that they're easy to memorize. So they're not generally that complex. Um, there are examples of memorizing very long passages of scripture, say, or other other lists of information using using, say, songs and chants. But still, they tend to be fairly simple. Think, for example, of Gregorian chants. You know how Gregorian chants sound, right? And so on. Well, if you wanted to be become a monk uh, centuries ago, uh, one of the qualifications typically for becoming a monk and entering a monastery was to memorize the Book of Psalms, all of the Psalms. How did they do that? How did they mem to become a monk and to be tonsured? You had to memorize 150 psalms. Well, how did that happen? They chanted them. They used chants to uh, to to memorize these psalms. And in their own their services, they would chant the psalms over and over again until they were part of their deep memory. Now, in this Google Internet society that we live in, um, we don't tend to we don't often observe people uh, memorizing vast amounts of information, but in the ancient world, in the medieval world, it was quite common. Back to the question, why? Why do we do this? And, and Rob, can you, oh, I know, I think I know what to do here. I just need to click on this. Um, 
if you hear me say Rob, it's because my colleague is here helping me and I need him desperately. Uh, so here we are in the introduction. Why? Well, first, children love to sing and they will sing whether you want them to or not. And they will sing, um, they will sing, sing things you, 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 you'd be surprised that, they, that they're singing because uh, maybe they've only heard it once on the radio and they're singing, you deserve a break today, so get up and get away. And they've only heard that once and they're singing it. I still remember that because I've heard it and I don't even think McDonald's uses that particular jingle anymore, but I still remember it. Uh, can anyone remember the Burger King jingle that would compete with You Deserve a Break Today? Well, I can. Have it your way. Have it your way at Burger King. What, what does it go? Uh, how's it go? Um, uh, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. Special orders don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us have it your way. Why do I still remember that? Well, it's, it's a fun little jingle, and I now am remembering... Uh, the distinctives of Burger King's burger service. And Rob, before I go on, can you turn that off, this part here for me, this this video feed? I'm, I'm at the corner of my eye, I'm looking at myself, and uh, maybe that... Uh, I will. If I turn it off, they'll, it turns off for them, too. Oh, okay. Well, can we just re reduce it? No. All right. You see, I'm trying to look at you through the camera, and... Off to my side, I see myself, and um, I don't know. I just don't like seeing myself that way. <clears throat> so children are going to sing. Um, they're going to sing. They're going to sing, whether we want them to or not. Um, they'll sing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Can you remember some of those uh, jingles you learned out on the playground when you were um, just a child? Uh, you remember the schoolyard songs? Uh, the boys learned them too, but so did the girls. I can still remember this one. Ching ching my play, ching ching my playmates, come out and play with me, and bring your dollies three, climb up my apple tree, and so on. Uh, and we'll have, and, and then the rest of it's coming, and we'll have jolly fun forever more, 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 more. Okay, you get the picture. Kids will sing. They will memorize quickly, and they will sing. Um, and a child's memory is strong. Um, they, you know, I'm sure there are studies that show this, but um, young children in particular remember things quickly and they remember things well. So Dorothy Sayers would call this teaching with the grain. Why not? If this is a strength that uh, this is a strength that uh, children have, why not? You know what I just did? I just put a post-it note. I just put a post-it note over my video feed. Isn't that, I mean, that, that is low-tech technology, but it works. <clears throat> I feel much better now. I'm not looking, I'm not seeing myself. Um, so uh, their, their memories are strong. And so why not teach with the grain? Why not leverage that strength? And instead of just letting them occasionally memorize some songs here and there, why not use songs to actually help them to master important information? Um, if you add music to their memory, their memory, I think, is served even better and becomes even stronger. Now, there's some other benefits from by, for, uh, that come with teaching, teaching by song. Um, you, you get kids singing together. You get them um, in, in a homeschool situation, get two or three kids singing together, sing with you. In a classroom situation, you can have even larger groups of kids singing together. Uh, they acquire some choral singing uh, practice and techniques through this. Um, good vocal training, the things that come with singing, the, the, the benefits that come with singing generally come when you employ songs um, in, your, in your pedagogy. Certainly, um, there's a kind of pleasure that comes from, from singing together. And if the songs uh, are done well, if they're well crafted, um, there can be increased pleasure. There can be some humor. There can be some. Uh, there there can be irony. There can be some. There can be some surprises that come. Um, you can even incorporate hand motions and bodily motions. So it's not just singing, but it's a, a kind of dramatization of the material that you're studying. Uh, this is often done with the singing of history songs. Um, but you can do this with anything. We, we certainly do it with vocabulary songs. For example, wigilo, wigilari, wigilawi, wigilatum. 
I watched to watch, I watched, watched. Why not incorporate uh, a hand motion into uh, um, and body mo bodily motions to anything that you're memorizing? Kids will sometimes march around, dance in, in different ways, use their bodies to dramatize what they're singing. Would a third grader, a fourth grader, a fifth grader enjoy doing that? You bet they would. Uh, a nice change from some of the more didactic modes of teaching. So I think we should work this in. A chance to get up, move around, clap your hands, sing. I didn't mention clapping or snapping your fingers. All of these things can be added uh, while employing song as a pedagogy. So that's why we do it. Kids enjoy it. It strengthens their memory. It's, it, it, there's all of these uh, additional benefits. It's pleasurable. So we should do it. Um, who? Uh, I mean, what? Uh, well, what is it? Uh, we've really already covered this. Uh, important content and information worth committing to memory so that it uh, shapes the soul of the student permanently. Um, useful information um, for which you want immediate access. Now, notice there's, I've really listed, there's really two descriptions of what, what uh, songs can be. Um, there's simply the the desire and the goal of of mastering important information you you want to you want to you want to learn say the 12 sons of jacob if you're teaching the old testament you could give them that list and um you want them to know it or the books of the bible why not know the books of the bible you could just have them memorize those 66 books of the bible or they could sing them and actually have some fun doing so and that would be useful information like the 12 sons of jacob reuben simeon Reuben, Reuben, Simeon, uh, Judah's in there, Le Levi, who some of the others, uh, Naphtali, or you could just sing it, Reuben, Simeon, <coughs> Reuben, Simeon, no, no, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Ashar, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin, these are the 12 sons of Jacob, hey, that's how we've done it. I remember once my daughter, when she was in third grade, was being interviewed by a pastor uh, at a recreational event, and this pastor knew that she was going to a classical school, and he started asking her questions like, um, you know, she was in third grade, I believe, how, what, you know, basic questions like, well, you know, do you do you, you know, tell me who some of the apostles were? You know, well, she knew them all, and and then and then she said, do you know the twelve sons of Jacob? <laughs> She thought this was kind of a game. Well, let's ask each other questions. And uh, and, and the pastor, had to, he could not quite reconstruct them, but my daughter Zoe was able to rattle them off rather quickly. Kids will beat us every time when it comes to feats of memory. And if you add songs, uh, all the more so. So this is the time when you want to load their memories up with important information. Now, I think it's a mistake to, to only use repetition without songs and chants and jingles. Just, I mean, kids will do fine, will, will do well even with rote, rep, rote repetition. By rote, we just mean memorized lists of information without using these other, these other tools. Um, some people call that drill and kill when they're speaking pejoratively. Well, kids can memorize lists and it can still be exciting, but why, if you're gonna memorize a list like the 12 Sons of Jacob, why not use a chant or some kind of rhythmic way of, 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 of repeating it than just reciting it straight. Uh, the kids want to sing, so sing it. And as we know, since there's so many varieties of songs and so many ways that you can chant, um, you'll, never, you, you'll, never, you'll, you'll never run out of different ways of, 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 of using these tools to keep it interesting. So if you're gonna memorize information, why not make it interesting and enjoyable? Why not use songs? But you saw there under what, I also mentioned that we want to commit to memory um, those things that will shape the souls of students too. So we don't want to just memorize the 12 sons of Jacob and the books of the Bible as useful information, even though that is useful information. We want to commit to memory great poems, passages of literature, and of course, for those of us in the Christian tradition, scripture. This is the time to do it. I remember teaching uh, some grammar school kids First Peter two, uh, that passage about us becoming built like living stones. And um, it went something like this, and we all like living stones are being built to a, into a spiritual house to, to, to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God 
through Jesus Christ. And we had some hand motions and so on, and we we hammered as you know, they were being built. And and you know that stays with the students, and that's just a little kind of rhythmic chant. You can sing that verse. You can do it. You can commit that verse to memory in lots of other ways besides just memorizing it in a rote fashion. So memorize the good stuff too. Chesterton was often criticized for quoting other other passages from literature in his own books and not getting it quite right. And he would never cite or footnote the his quotations. And when someone brought this to his attention and was critical of him, he said, well, isn't it isn't the point of studying literature is 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 to, is is for it to shape your soul? He said literature is the man, and he liked the fact that he could quote from memory these passages, uh, even if he didn't get them always quite precisely right, because these passages of literature dwelled within him. He didn't have to Google them; he d they were a part of him. They were always just uh, a second away. From the on the tip of his tongue because they were on the top of his brain. Um, my daughter Zoe just recently graduated from Grove City College, and she relayed to us a few years ago she was in a freshman or sophomore history class uh, on ancient history, and as she was completing her essay question, what did she do? She called to mind her Roman and her Greek and Roman history song and sang it to herself to get some of the dates and persons right. And she wrote me a little note after that in e an email and said. I'm so thankful for my classical education. Um, I would be in, in the carpool driving my children to the classical Christian school here in Harrisburg and having the older kids and the younger kids all singing together songs and chants that they had learned throughout the years. I mean, you know, uh, high school students singing with first and second and third graders the same songs. I was at a, a Christmas concert last, last Christmas when I, I caught a group of about five or six kids, including a couple of graduates from our school, High school, who graduated high school, um, singing uh, one of these history songs together with kids from, say, first or second grade all the way up to these graduates. They were all smiling in a group of about six or seven. So it does bring pleasure, and it does shape the soul. Ah, well, who? Well, certainly all human beings, but it is true that students when they're younger, say K through six, are particularly primed to sing. They're particularly primed to remember and put these two things together and what a powerful tool it is. So I think songs and chants should be used frequently, especially in our K through six curricula. Um, I think, you know, I consult with schools a lot. And, and if I walk through the halls of a classical grammar school, K through six grammar school, and I don't hear a lot of singing and chanting, um, to me, something is not quite right. Sometimes teachers will think this, because adults don't typically turn to songs and chants to master what we're trying to study. We think, okay, I need to use songs and chants, so I'll do it once a week in history class, I'll do a history song. No, the kids will do it every day. They'll do it every hour, happily. So we need to sing and chant a lot more than, what our, than our preference would be. Um, so in, a, in, a, in a, a robust, happy, classical Christian grammar school, uh, kids will be singing when they're lining up to go outside to recess. They might be singing the 12 Sons of Jacob. They might be singing some uh, grammar chants when they come back. Uh, at the beginning, at the beginning and end of each class, there might be some some singing and chanting. So younger kids should be singing and chanting a lot, and they will love it and enjoy it. And it's a nice break from the other kinds of instruction anyway. But even when you finish sixth grade, you're going into seventh and eighth grade. When doing this is not as naturally attractive to children. It still should not be forgotten. It still should be something that's employed. Maybe not as often, but it's a tool that we want to use the rest of our lives. Um, sure, you've heard of med students and law students and others, but people, like, often you hear uh, medical students who are studying an anatomy making use of various mnemonic tools to remember the various parts of the body. They will come up with their own songs to, to memorize the parts of the body. Why? because they have to. <laughs> they, they have to do a, an immense amount of memory work, and they know that just rote memory is not the best tool to use. So even adults, even med students, will use songs and other kinds of devices to try to remember the different parts of the body. So this is a tool that we want to keep using even through our adult life. Even in the junior high and high school, there still should be times when songs and chants are, are employed to master important information. Uh, in, in, the, in the upper grades, though, in grades 7 through 12, 
songs don't have to be, are not merely used for memory purposes, but also are used for the purposes of responding to great, to truth, goodness, and beauty, where they've encountered it. Um, there are teachers who will assign, like in, in, in uh, my son right now in a theology class, is, is one of his assignments is to write a song in response to one of the theological doctrines that he has studied. And I remember my daughter Zoe doing the same thing, and how uh, in a group of three, three students, uh, three, uh, three, two of our other classmates had to put work together to create a song in response to uh, it was God's providence or sovereignty, something like that. And that assignment of actually creating a song and performing a song themselves, Zoe worked on the piano, if I recall, and one of her classmates worked on the on the words. Um, it was transforming for her. It was very powerful. So song is, of course, a mode of admiration, celebration, and praise. So songs can be used for that purpose as well. Um, older students will enjoy going back down into the younger grades and participating in songs, chants, and jingles. Older students can actually help create them. Uh, their composing ability should be uh, ready for the task. So why not have older students continue to engage in this pedagogy by actually becoming, as it were, assistant teachers, creating songs and chants collaboratively with teachers and younger students to, uh, to, teach, to teach students in the grammar school. When, well, as I've touched upon this already, but I think regularly, daily, the beginning and end of classes, uh, in the car, in the checkout line, uh, in the uh, interstices of life, these songs and chants should, should be uh, utilized. And they can be uh, a kind of a means of diversion and entertainment, as well as uh, repetition and review of, of important learning. I mentioned the, the carpool <laughs> travels already. Carpool travels were often filled with songs and chants when uh, two or three families would be carpooling together in a van with kids of all ages, uh, singing these various songs and so forth. It was, it was, I enjoyed it. And I, <laughs> I learned most of the, most of the chants and songs that I have memorized, I learned as a carpool dad. I'll give you an example. Shirley Grammer is a curriculum that has some songs, some jingles uh, built into it. Um, and I, I learned this in the car, in the carpool, as a carpool dad. A sentence, sentence, sentence is complete, complete, complete with five simple rules. It meets, meets, meets. It has a subject, 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 and a verb, verb, verb. It makes sense, sense, sense with every word, word, word. Add a capital letter, letter, and an N mark too. That's what the sentence is all about for you. Okay. I, I ended up chanting and singing that as loud as anybody else in the car. Um, my son Noah, when he was three, was in the checkout line at the local supermarket. And... We were in a line, and there were—I wasn't there. My wife reported this. Uh, there was an older woman behind Noah. He was sitting in the cart, and he began to sing at the top of his lungs something like this: Alpha, beta, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, micron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, chi, psi, and omega. This is the Greek alpha, beta. Now, of course, picture that in a, a three-year-old voice. And, of course, the elderly lady behind Noah was quite uh, amused by this, and but a little baffled, too. And she asked my wife, uh, what is he doing? And my wife said, he's, he's singing the Greek alphabet. <laughs> and the woman said, oh, okay. And then after a pause, apparently, she said, does he know the English alphabet? And my wife had to say, well, no, he doesn't. Noah learned the Greek alphabet because his sisters were singing it around the house. He learned the Greek alphabet before he learned the English alphabet. So any place uh, is good to sing important information. Well, how? Uh, well, borrow and steal. Uh, find good melodies wherever you can. Use uh, some curricula that already comes with some... Uh, some good songs and chants included. Don't feel like you have to be wed to them. You can create your own. Um, song can lead to song and chant can lead to chant. And you can personalize and customize, especially if you have some composing ability of your own. But curricula like Shirley Grammer, the Veritas History, uh, Classical Academic Press, that's me, that's us, that's we, 
song has a, the song school series, Latin for children, uh, Spanish for children. Uh, we have songs built into those curricula, and they can be of help. But you should compose your own. I'll, I'm going to be playing you a sample here in just a minute. Um, if you remind me, Rob, <clears throat> um, oh, it's right there. Okay, so let me just let me give you let me give you a couple of samples. Um, but keep in mind, these are these have been produced by others. You can produce your own. These aren't difficult, and you don't need to have a you know guitar or piano present to do this. You can use a shaker, you can use your hands, or you can just use your voice. Although if you can play a musical instrument like the keyboards or the or the piano, and you have them or the guitar, and you have them available, yeah, certainly use them. Uh, but here's some samples. So this is from um, this is the Amo Amasa Mat chant from uh, that classical ap academic press has produced, and we put this on YouTube. You should be able to see it. Amas you love. Amat he she it loves. Amas we love. Amat us you are love. Amat they are loving. Mo amas amat. Amamus amat is amat. Amo amas amat. Amamus amat is amat. Amo love. Amas you love. Amat he she it loves. Amamus we love. Amatus you are loved. Amat they are loving. Oh, Amas Amat. Amatus Amat is Amat. Oh, Amas Amat. Amatus Amat is Amat. Oh, I love. Amas you love. She she it loves. Amatus we love. Amatus you are loved. They are. They are loving. Okay, so uh, you had a chance. It, you noticed that, that that we injected some humor in there. Uh, you can certainly have some fun and enjoy enjoy this as well. Um, did you notice though it went on maybe a little long? Well, I think it did go on a little long. If you're an adult, if you're a third grader, however, that was perfect length uh, because that is enjoyable. The, the you know the children who say. Uh, read it again, Daddy. Do it again, Daddy. When they're enjoying something, uh, once or twice is not enough. It's okay to do it three or four, or five times. It's okay to visit it, visit, you know, do it two or three times during the day, and certainly to every time you come back to the subject to to review the song or the chant. That's perfectly appropriate. Um, let me give you an example now from um, a, a more a more less entertaining chant, just straight up chant without any music. Chapter five. Chapter five. Our ducks, our ducks, bold, bold. Our ducks, our ducks, bold, bold. In gens and gentis, huge, huge, huge. In gens and gentis, huge, huge, huge. Felix, Felikis, happy, lucky, fruitful. Felix, Felikis, happy, lucky, fruitful. In Felix, in Felikis, unhappy, unlucky, unfruitful. In Felix, in Felikis, unhappy, unlucky, unfruitful. Waitus, Viteris, old, aged. Waitus, Viteris, old, aged. Now, this is audio only, so if you're looking at a black screen, uh, that's intentional. We'll go on for a few more, a few more minutes. Another minute. Ferox, Ferocus, fierce warlike. Ferox, Ferocus, fierce war. Old aged. Waitus, Viteris, old aged. Ferox, Ferocus, fierce warlike. Ferox, Ferocus, fierce warlike. Ferox, Ferocus, wild, wild. Ferox, Ferocus, wild, wild. Prudence, prudentis, sensible, prudent. Prudence, prudentis, sensible, prudent. De waste, de witis, rich, costly. De waste, de witis, rich, costly. Potence, potentis, capable, powerful. Potence, potentis, capable, powerful. Okay, so you see how um, just using straight audio with a kind of call and response formula can work as well. Um, you can do it slowly. You can you could speed it up. So we might we might do something like this. We might do femina, 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 woman, woman, and then have them respond. And I might get louder. Femina, femina, woman, woman, 
and have the class or the group do it louder. I might get soft and slow. Femina, femina, woman, woman. And that variety is also pleasing and enjoyable. So there's no reason to keep doing something, uh, doing a song or a chant the exact, the exact same way each time. It's, it's perfectly appropriate to, to have theme and variation. Now, here's an example of a song with musical accompaniment uh, that is uh, more, more like a traditional uh, child song, folk melody type style. And in this case, it's uh, another, Latin, uh, another Latin song that's uh, some Latin vocabulary being taught through the song. This will be audio only as well. You won't see any video. When you ask for anything, you have to say a mama tag. When you ask for anything, you have to say a mama tag. If you really want to have it, don't just take it away. Just say a mama tag. Timi gratias, I go. Okay, so there you see some traditional folk melodies, public domain melodies that we've learned, we've, we've used to uh, create some, some songs. Children really will enjoy those kinds of melodies. And by the way, um, let me just mention right now a, a, a great website where you can find these melodies online. They're all public domain, so you can use them without, without concern. Um, let's see, uh, songsforteaching.com. So if you go to songsforteaching.com, you can just you can search lots of old uh, melodies, find them, play them, and then uh, help create some of your own. Now now I'm going to play you uh, something a little more uh, a little more lively. We'll go to um, oh there we are. I had it right there on my screen after all. So let me just circle that for you. You might not have a tool. Oh let's see. Ten. Okay there we go. So, songsforteaching.com, uh, really worth uh, taking a look at if you're looking for, for some ideas for melodies. Now let's go uh, listen to just a couple of different more examples, and then we'll stop with the samples. This is, um, this is from Song School Spanish, and it features some Spanish, uh, Latino-sounding, uh, Latin-sounding songs. Hola. Hola, the song you are about to hear is a sample song and one of over 40 songs that come with the Song School Spanish curriculum published by Classical Academic Press, which can be found on the web at classicalacademicpress.com. And now, Arriba! Feel free to get up and dance! Cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez Uno, 
2 y 3 1, 2 y 3 4, 5, 6 7, 8, 9, 10 1, 2 y 3 1, 2 y 3 4, 5, 6 7, 8, 9, 10 1, 2 y 3 Ok, you get the... Uh, you get the get a sense of it there that's a just kind of a, a fun song to sing and the, and so you can have some fun you can you can uh, work in various uh, world styles of music as well but we've typically turned to American folk melodies for a lot of the songs that we've created but you can even use Gregorian chants and you can straight up call and response there's a lot of variety that can be used and let me give you one more example These are the passive endings for uh, Latin verbs, or excuse me, the imperfect endings. And this involves some animation as well, as you can tell. So this is a little more sophisticated. I want to learn Latin. And it, uh, yeah, the references some videos that we've, we've created. Okay, so there's some samples for you to show you the uh, the kind of spectrum or continuum of kinds of songs and chants you can use. Uh, you know, a lot of what we have done has been in reference to other things that we've encountered. Um, certainly, the uh, the American folk tradition of music. So, I think you should do the same. And then, of course, uh, look to your own talents and training. Some of you have been trained musically and would be would be quite capable of creating uh, some of your own songs. Um, but where, where else can you go? Well, engage some people that you know who have uh, musical talent and composing talent. Uh, someone in uh, your, your, your school, the music teacher in your uh, church or, 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 or community, uh, your co-op. Um, I remember once a first grade teacher was having trouble creating good songs and chants. Now she had inherited some when she came into the, the class as the teacher, but she wanted to do more. And I remember uh, she created about three songs using the melody of the Ten Little Indians. And, you know, that was the same melody I used with Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Dan, and So she had three or four songs with, the t with that melody. We realized, well, that's probably too much. So she, she found, she engaged a parent who was a well-trained musician and a good composer, and she created some great songs. In fact, this woman created a song that described the capital of Harrisburg, the capital city of Harrisburg in Pennsylvania, and described for the first graders in this song uh, the, the bicameral legislature, how the governor was elected, and the, who the lieutenant governor was, how many representatives and senators there were. A very uh, content-rich song. It had three verses and a chorus. These first graders were um, doing a tour of the, of the capital uh, in Harrisburg. And by the way, the capital the Capitol building in Harrisburg is the most beautiful in the nation, and that's one of the lines from the song. The Capitol of Harrisburg, most beautiful in the nation, and so on. Uh, well, they were touring it, and the tour guide made the mistake of, uh, well, here's how it worked. She, he was saying, did you know that we have a Senate and we have a House of Representatives? Oh, yes, we know that there are senators, There's and there's, there's 96 of them, and there's 212 representatives. And he was a bit surprised. And, and they said, we know this because of our song. Would you like to hear it? And he said, yes, that was, that was a mistake. So there they were in the, in the dome of the capital of Harrisburg in a spiral staircase. And these 21 first graders began to sing this song that goes about three and a half minutes at the top of their lungs. At the end of that song, a gentleman came out, of the cor up, out into the corridor and invited the entire class into his office. It was Governor Rendell. You never know where these songs and chants will take, will take you. And he spoke to these kids for about 20 minutes. Um, so uh, bring in people uh, that can help you to do this. Bring in older students. Older students will, will be glad to help. Have students uh, in, uh, compete in groups maybe to create a, a chant or a song or to, or to write a portion of a song or a chant. As I said, consult the traditional folk melodies. You see the, uh, the website there. 
and make use of a variety of styles and melodies. Okay, and then going on to our last slide, and then we're going to uh, have some interaction. Um, samples. Um, I think I've been able to get through all of these, so um, I won't have to, to, to engage you with any more. Um, so yeah, I think we're, I think we're in good shape. Let's let's then hear from you, um, your questions, um, your comments. Uh, also, if you've been able to uh, locate some other great sources for songs and chants, feel free to mention those as well. And I'll start looking at the feed here and begin to answer some of your questions. Yes, okay, Abigail Hicks says that the Veritas history songs are great. Yes, uh, they did a good job with, um, with, with those songs. So anyone who's used Veritas history has is, 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 um, listened to those. The songs uh, are surprisingly long. You know, they, they might co they each, each song co covers 32 history cards. And yet I found that elementary school students will gladly learn those songs and really master them. It was one of those songs that my daughter recited to herself, sung to herself while she was sitting for a history exam at Grove City College. Okay. Um, Kelly says, we use Who Made You Catechism songs at home and at our church. Excellent. Yeah, the, those of you who study the catechism, they're short little questions with answers like uh, uh, the first catechism question in the Westminster Catechism is, um, you know, what is what um, what is your purpose? And it's to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And uh, <clears throat> why not put those to songs? And of course, they get more sophisticated and longer than that. It's excellent. Um, what is the chief end of man? Glorify God and enjoy him forever. Deb says, uh, to what level does CAP go with uh, Latin and Spanish? Uh, with Latin, we go all the way from uh, really kindergarten or first grade to to the end to 12th grade and you can see that on our website under under latin we have a uh, song school latin one and two then we have latin for children a b and c and each of these books are designed to be studied in a year and then we have four levels in our latin alive curriculum which is our junior high and high school curriculum curriculum latin alive books one two three and four four is coming out in a few months um Okay, and M-S-A-G-O-R uh, says thank you, thanks for coming. And uh, let's see, and then we have Maria saying, um, Phil Tulga has some great songs and rhythms for math that are quite different. Great, so check out Phil Tulga, Tulga to see what he has. And then Liz says there's an iTunes app called My Talking Pet, and my kids like to take pictures of our pets and make them sing the Latin songs. Excellent. Okay. I'll take a look at that. My Talking Pet app. Excellent. Any other questions or comments that you'd like to uh, make before we sign off? Okay. Uh, one of our uh, one of our attendees says, "I love lyrical life sciences for science." I have I have heard that once or twice too, and it did sound really good. Uh, lyrical life sciences. Uh, and Deb says, uh, for the high school students starting out, what level should they start with CAP? Uh, good question. Uh, we would recommend uh, Latin Alive Book 1, unless they've had, say, uh, two years um, of elementary school Latin. If they've done two years of, uh, say, upper elementary school Latin, they could go into our Latin Alive Book 2. We'd be glad to talk to you on the phone about the specifics of that um, of that question and decision too, Deb. And Abigail uh, also says Lyrical Latin has some great songs. Yes, that's fun. Um, you can buy a CD called Lyrical Latin that's, that um, will use various kinds of songs to help uh, help learn conjugations and declensions, declension endings. Okay, any other questions or comments before we uh, before we sign off today?
Well, excellent. Thank you very much for, oops, we have one more question here or a comment from Linda. My children cannot seem to access the message of the song out of the context of the tune. Any suggestions? We sing states and capital songs. Unless I'm humming the tunes, they cannot access, access the information. That's a great question. Uh, sometimes various children, you'll find that um, they can memorize something and not be able to access it. It's almost as if they kind of file it away in some drawer, but no, don't know how to get that drawer open. So I think what we need to do in that case is to keep prompting them to open that drawer. And this means that, for example, we're not just singing these songs like Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo, Catch a Tigger by the Toe, which is kind of a nonsense song that might be fun to sing. We're trying to actually have fun singing, but to sing important information as well. So we want the students to know what this information is and how it's used. So if you're singing it just like a rote list of syllables, like Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo, they can do that with the capitals and not really be thinking that these are the capitals of, of the United States. So adding some additional teaching tools besides the song can help, like visual clues, like um, uh, speaking to Linda, why not have a big map of the United States up while you're singing with a pointer? And as you sing each capital, put your pointer on the, cap the name of the capital and the state. So there, there's another pathway that's being utilized. And there, then, then you're making the connection that when I sing Denver, Colorado, um, it's not just any mini money mo. It's that city in that state on that map in the, on this planet. So I look for other ways of trying to help them to make connections so that they can access that information. Really good question. Um, Kelly says, I was not here at the beginning. Well, then you've missed everything. Just kidding. Uh, Kelly says, I was not here at the beginning. Could you comment on a macaronic story? Some of your songs are like that part Latin, part English. Why use those? Great. Sometimes that's called a diglot weave or a code switching when you would use um, uh, English and say Latin at the same time or English and Spanish together. And the, that's, uh, to, that, there's actually been research done about this. Uh, one of our Spanish authors, uh, Julia Kraut, has done a lot of research in this area. It is actually a helpful way to learn. It's, of course, not where you're going to stay when we're trying to just teach Latin vocabulary rather than, um, or even Spanish vocabulary, rather than uh, reading skills and speaking skills quite yet, we just want them to learn vocabulary. Doing some code switching or diglot weave, that means diglot means two tongues, weaving in two tongues or two languages at the same time, can actually be very helpful. Kids are able to know uh, that they're, uh, they're doing two languages at once so that it doesn't confuse them. So you might say, you know, I went to the casa, and inside the casa was a big perro, which means I went to my house, and inside the house was a big dog. Um, what we're trying to do there is teach them that casa means house, and perro means dog. Later, there'll be more in, in, in later language training. We'll of course drop the English out altogether, but we do it at the beginning mainly for the mainly for a, a teaching vocabulary and vocabulary mastery. So it's they're kind of like training wheels that will eventually fall off. Certainly won't be doing that for too long. Um, and then, great. Uh, I'm starting, okay, she says, start making up endings sung to the appropriate tune, which causes the kids to correct me and then say the correct endings. Okay, great. So Julia's giving some, uh, uh, some advice for addressing the access issue there. Fantastic. All right, well, it's been, uh, it's been about 45 to 50 minutes, so I think we'll, we'll go ahead and finish up. Once again, we want to thank you for your time, and thank you for uh, all of the work you're doing, educating your own children and students in various school and co-op settings and homeschool settings. We really appreciate it, and we really are glad to be partnering with you. So have a great afternoon and evening.